Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to discuss melanocytic lesions, which are hyperpigmented skin lesions that originate from melanocytes. So as you can see, we have seven pictures here, and each of these pictures shows a different type of melanocytic lesion. Later on, we will go through each of these pictures and we'll name the type of melanocytic lesion shown. But first, what I'd like to discuss is the basic anatomy and physiology of melanocytes so that we're all clear on that before we then discuss the different types of melanocytic lesions shown in these pictures. So, the anatomy and physiology of melanocytes then. So we need to start just by drawing a picture of the skin. So remember, the skin is divided into two basic layers. The epidermis, which is the outer layer that faces the outer world and which is hard and tough and waterproof and which protects our body from the elements. And then the supporting layer that sits underneath the epidermis and supports the epidermis. So let me draw a basic picture of this. So at the top, we're going to have the epidermis and that's the border of the epidermis, and then underneath we're going to have the dermis. And remember, the interface between the epidermis and the dermis is not um, smooth, it's not straight. Instead, it's this wavy sort of uh, structure here. And this, remember, stops the epidermis sliding over the dermis. It keeps the two uh, nicely held together and stops one sliding over the other. So let's just label this up. So the one on top here is the epidermis and the one underneath is the dermis. So let's just discuss the structure of the epidermis uh, first, and then I'll have a little bit of a discussion of the dermis. So just to make it absolutely crystal clear, this is where the outside world is, and underneath here is where the rest of the body is. So the structure of the epidermis then. So remember, the epidermis is a squamous, stratified epithelium. In fact, you can give it an even bigger name. You can say that it's a keratinized, squamous, stratified epithelium. Now, epithelium just means that it's lining a surface of the body, so that's obvious. Stratified just means that it's not a single cell thick. Instead, it's going to be multiple layers of cells uh, that make up this uh, epithelium. Squamous means that the outermost cells of the epithelium are flat. Squamous just means flat. Uh, and finally, keratinized uh, just means that the cells are going to become full of a protein filament known as keratin. So the epidermis, we can describe it as a keratinized, squamous, stratified epithelium. And I hope you're now uh, familiar with what that means and happy with what that means. So let's just discuss then um, that in a bit more detail. So here is the epidermis. It's made up of multiple layers of cells. Now, remember the epidermis is continuously shedding. We are continuously replacing our skin. The entire skin is pretty much replaced in a period of two weeks. Uh, and that's because cells from the outermost layer of the epidermis are continuously being lost and shed away to the um, outer world. And therefore, we're continuously having to replace those cells that are being lost. So the entire thing is continuously moving upwards. Now, right at the bottom of the epidermis, at the interface between the epidermis and the dermis, are the cells that are responsible for dividing and producing new cells. And those are the basal uh, stem cells of the epidermis. And I'm going to draw one of those here. So this little uh, picture here, this is a basal stem cell. Sorry, this little uh, square or um, um, rectangle. Um, this is representing a basal stem cell. And this is responsible for producing all of the cells. Well, it's not alone. It, there's loads of these. These are responsible for producing uh, the cells of the epidermis. So most of this bottom layer of the epidermis is lined by these basal stem cells. And what these do is they divide continuously uh, and their progeny, one of them, will remain a stem cell. So one of the daughter cells will remain a stem cell and it will remain in the position of the original basal stem cell here. So we maintain the population of basal stem cells. Whereas the second daughter cell, it will then move upwards. It'll move off the basal layer here and up into the higher layers of the epidermis. And as it gradually moves up the different layers, it will change in nature and it will become flatter and flatter. So remember, the epidermis is described as a keratinized, squamous, stratified epithelium. Squamous, remember, meant that the cells were flat. The outer cells are flat. Not all of the cells of the epidermis are flat. You can see that the basal stem cells are more this sort of square slash rectangle shape. 
they're not flat, but the outer cells are flat. So the daughter cell, as it moves up and differentiates, it will gradually become flatter and flatter like a pancake. And it also produces loads of keratin and fills its cytoplasm with keratin, uh, hence keratinized squamous stratified epithelium. And that is the basics of how we continuously produce the epidermis. The basal stem cells are continuously dividing to produce daughter cells that will move up from the basal uh, layer and uh, up towards the outer world. And as they move up gradually, they'll be uh, differentiating uh, and they'll gradually become more and more flat, uh, pancake-like, and fill up with keratin. And then once they actually make it to the outer surface, they'll stay there for a while and protect the body, but then eventually they'll be shed away and the whole thing continues and continues. Okay, and the whole life cycle of one of these cells uh, lasts about two weeks. So it takes about two weeks from being born from a basal stem cell uh, through the differentiation process, gradually rising up the layers of the epidermis to being on the outer layer and then being shed away. So they don't live long, about two weeks. Uh, and I'm just going to draw one of those final sort of pancake uh, squamous keratin overloaded cells here that makes up the outer layer of the epidermis. And we call these cells... Um, that have differentiated from the basal stem cell progeny, we call them keratinocytes. So this is an example of a keratinocyte. And of course, that just means that it's a cell, site means cell, that is full of this protein filament called keratin. Okay, so that's the basics of the epidermis, just a revision there. The dermis is much easier to discuss. This is just uh, a connective tissue layer, so there's lots of uh, connective tissue such as collagen and elastin and things like that, uh, and it's full up of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and nerves, uh, and of course the blood vessels will be supplying the nutrients that the epidermis needs, so it's supporting the epidermis. Uh, it's a connective tissue layer that's uh, supporting the epidermis. Right, so there's the basic anatomy and physiology of the skin. Now let's get on to what we really wanted to discuss, which is the melanocytes. So the melanocytes are not yet shown on my picture. I'm firstly just going to write the name. Uh, so melanocytes, the stars of the show, um, they are the cells from which all of these melanocytic lesions are going to arise. So what are melanocytes? So in case anyone doesn't have a clue what a melanocyte is, which I'm suspecting most people will have a basic idea of what they are and what they do, Melanocytes are cells that are responsible for the production of the pigment that pigments the skin. So they produce a pigment that we call melanin, and this is responsible for determining how dark or light your skin is. So the more melanin you produce, the darker your skin will be. If you produce very little melanin, your skin will be much, much lighter. So people who have black skin, uh, their melanocytes will be producing far more melanin than someone who has very white skin. So let's now have a look where the melanocytes actually fit into the anatomy of the epidermis. So melanocytes are actually placed on the basal cell layer with the basal stem cells. They're dotted around the place with the basal stem cell cells. So most of this basal layer here uh, is made up of basal stem cells, but dotted around the place, you're also going to have melanocytes. So I'm going to draw one of these melanocytes in green here. So this is representing a melanocyte. But actually, I need to make it a little bit more complicated than that, because they are not simple cells. Their main cell body is a sort of um, rectangle slash square shape, uh, a columnar shape. Or, sorry, a cuboidal shape is probably the best term to describe it, rather than columnar. Uh, but off the main cell body, you have tentacles called dendrites. And I'm going to explain the physiology of these. So I'm going to draw a few of them on here. So these are representing these tentacle structures uh, known as dendrites. And these are spreading up into the higher layers of the epidermis. So remember, all of this space here, this is an empty space. This is where all of those cells that are mid-differentiation, that are gradually making their way up to become the fully differentiated keratinocytes of the outer layer of the epidermis, are currently uh, undergoing that process. So, um, it has dendrites which extend up in between these uh, cells that are differentiating. Um, okay, so let's now discuss what these cells are actually going to do. So we've discussed where they are, we've discussed their basic structure, now let's discuss what they actually do. So they are responsible for producing something known as melanin, which is the pigment of the skin. Now, melanin is not just one chemical. 
I cannot draw you the chemical structure of melanin because it's not just one molecule. There are loads of different molecules that all do the same thing and which all uh, result in uh, the production of more pigmented skin. However, um, regardless of that, we can still represent melanin molecules as just a blob. So we're going to represent melanin molecules as a blue blob. So these melanocytes, and it's not showing up particularly well there, but I've drawn a blue blob in the cytoplasm of the melanocyte here. So the melanocytes produce these melanin compounds, and these melanin compounds are going to gradually make their way up the dendrites, and then, then what happens, this is really rather cool, the melanocytes give the melanin pigment molecules to the differentiating keratinocytes here, so to the actual skin cells, so that the skin cells get the melanin in their cytoplasm. So this keratinocyte up here, this will have melanin molecules in its cytoplasm here um, within it, um, which it will have received from melanocytes that are in the epidermis here. Now, what then is the purpose of melanin? So melanin is to protect us from ultraviolet radiation. So remember the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, there's loads of different frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. Right in the middle is visible light. However, up from visible light, i.e. higher frequency, higher energy electromagnetic radiation than light, is ultraviolet radiation, UV radiation. And remember, the reason it's called that is that it's beyond the violet range of the spectrum. So remember, when you look at the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, red is lowest frequency, and then you gradually go through the rainbow until you get to violet, and violet uh, is highest frequency electromagnetic radiation. Beyond that is non-visible electromagnetic radiation, and that's the ultraviolet, beyond the violet portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So remember, there are three different forms of UV radiation. There's UVA, UVB, and UVC. And UVA is the lowest frequency, UVC is the highest frequency, and UVB is in between. Thankfully, UVC radiation does not get through the ozone layer. So it's absorbed by the ozone layer uh, of our atmosphere and doesn't actually get down to touch our skin. UVA and UVB, however, do get down and touch our skin. Um, and UVB in particular is quite dangerous to biological life. It's high energy radiation, remember, and it can damage molecules such as DNA and can cause, therefore, mutations and cellular problems. So we don't really want UVB radiation getting into our body. Melanin is responsible for absorbing this UVB radiation and stopping it from penetrating into our body. It also absorbs visible uh, electromagnetic radiation, visible light as well, which is why it then makes your skin appear darker, because remember, darkness is the absence of light. So um, if melanin is absorbing visible light, you're going to get less visible light reflected off the skin, and therefore your skin will appear darker. So melanin absorbs uh, radiation both in the visible portion of the spectrum and the ultraviolet portion of the spectrum, but most importantly, it absorbs UVB radiation, which is really quite damaging, and therefore uh, we need that to protect us from UVB. And that's why people who live uh, in, uh, or people who are from um, portions of the Earth where there is more sunlight, i.e. closer to the equator, where they're going to be exposed to more UVB, tend to have darker skin um, because they need more melanin to protect them from the increased amount of UVB that they're going to be exposed to. And people who live further from the equator, or at least were descended uh, from humans who lived further from the equator, of course it's uh, different now because the world's globalisation has happened and everyone's uh, mixed up. Um, but people who are descended from... Um, humans who lived further from the equator tend to have lighter skin because they require less melanin um, because they're going to be exposed to less UVB. So that's the purpose of melanin. Those are where, that's where the melan melanocytes are in the skin and we've also discussed the fact that they're actually going to donate the melanin to the differentiating keratinocytes um, and um, the keratinocytes are then going to contain melanin. The one final thing that I want to say in this portion where we're discussing anatomy and physiology before we then go on to the melanocytic lesions is that you might think that people who have darker skin 
are going to have more melanocytes, and that's how they're going to have more melanin, and therefore uh, how they're going to have darker skin. That's not the case. People with white skin and people with black skin have the same numbers of melanocytes in their epidermis. They have the same density of melanocytes distributed around the place. The difference is that people with darker skin, their melanocytes will be far more active. They will be producing far more melanin than the people with lighter skin. So the difference is in the activity of the melanocytes rather than in the number of the melanocytes. And we'll see that that is in contrast to the melanocytic lesions generally, where the difference is going to be the number of melanocytes rather than the activity of the melanocytes, with the exception of this type of melanocytic lesion, which is a freckle, but we'll come on to that uh, in the uh, part two of this video. So, what I'd like to do briefly then is summarise what we've seen about the anatomy and physiology of melanocytes, and then uh, we'll have a break, uh, and then in the second part we'll discuss the melanocytic lesions. So, melanocytes then, they are responsible for producing melanin. Melanin is not just one compound, there are loads of different compounds that all are classified as melanin. And remember, they are pigments, they absorb visible and ultraviolet radiation, and that's the use of them to the skin, that they're going to absorb UVB and protect the body from harmful UVB radiation. You have melanocytes distributed on the basal layer of the epidermis, uh, spotted around the place, uh, and they have these dendrites that extend into the higher levels of the epidermis. They produce melanin, and the melanin makes its way up the dendrites, and the dendrites donate the melanin to the actual keratinocytes, so that the keratinocytes end up with melanin inside them. Um, finally, what I wanted to say is that the difference between uh, white people and black people is not in the number of melanocytes, but in the activity of the melanocytes. So the melanocytes will be far more active in people of darker skin than in people of lighter skin. In addition, one final thing to say is that melanocytes can change their activity if you expose yourself to a lot of sun, so if you sunbathe, uh, your melanocytes will be stimulated to produce more melanin uh, to protect your body from the increased amount of radiation that you're exposing it to, and therefore you'll end up with darker skin, and this is of course the phenomenon of tanning. So melanocytes can uh, adapt the amount of melanin they're producing, and they'll do that in response to the amount of uh, ultraviolet radiation that you're exposed to, and that's what happens when you get a tan from uh, sun exposure. Okay, so we'll have a break here, and in the next video we'll discuss these seven different types of melanocytic lesion and what has actually happened in terms of melanocytes.